Between the Cape of St. Maria and Japan, we were four months and twenty-two days, at which time there were no more than six besides myself that could stand upon their feet. So we in safety let fall our anchor about a league from a place called Bungo, at which time came to us many boats, and we suffered them to come aboard, being not able to resist them. These people did us no harm, neither of us understanding the one or the other. Within two or three days after our arrival, there came a Jesuit from a place called Langasake, to which place the Karak of Amakau is yearly wont to come, which, with other Japanese that were Christians, were our interpreters, which was not to our good, our mortal enemies being our churchmen. Nevertheless, the King of Bungo, the place where we arrived, showed us great friendship, for he gave us a house and land where we landed our sick men and had all refreshing that was needful. In the which time of our being here, the Emperor, hearing of us, sent presently five galleys or frigates to us to bring me to the court, where his highness was, which was distant from Bungo about an eighty English leagues. So that as soon as I came before him, he demanded of me of what country we were. So I answered him on all points, for there was nothing that he demanded not, both concerning war and peace between country and country, so that the particulars here to write would be too tedious. And for that time I was commanded to prison, being well used with one of our mariners that came with me to serve me. Two days later, the Emperor called me again, demanding the reason of us coming so far. I answered, We were a people that sought all friendship with all nations, and to have trade in all countries, bringing such merchandise as our country did afford into strange lands, in the way of traffic. He demanded it also, as concerning the wars between the Spaniard or Portugal and our country, and the reasons which I gave him to understand all things, which he was glad to hear, as it seemed to me. In the end, I was commanded to prison again, but my lodging was bettered in another place. So for thirty-nine days I was in prison, hearing no more news, neither of our ship nor captain, whether he were recovered of his sickness or not, nor of the rest of the company, in which time I looked every day to die, to be crossed, as the custom of justice is in Japan, as hanging is in our land, in which long time of imprisonment the Jesuits and the Portugals gave many evidences against me and the rest to the Emperor, that we were thieves and robbers of all nations, and were we suffered to live, it should be against the profit of His Highness and the land. His Highness Justice being executed, the rest of our nation without doubt should fear and not come here any more thus daily making access to the Emperor and procuring friends to hasten my death. But God, that is always merciful at need, showed mercy unto us, and would not suffer them to have their wills of us. In the end the Emperor gave them answer, that we as yet had not done to him, nor to none of his land, any harm or damage, therefore against reason and justice, to put us to death. If our countries had wars, the one with the other, that was no cause that he should put us to death, with which they were out of heart, that their cruel pretense failed them, for which God be evermore praised. Forty-one days being expired, the Emperor caused me to be brought before him again, demanding of me many questions more, which were too long to write. In conclusion, he asked me whether I were desirous to go to the ship to see my countrymen. I answered very gladly, to which he bade me do. So I departed and was freed from imprisonment. So that, with a rejoicing heart, I took a boat and went to our ship, where I found the captain and the rest recovered of their sickness. From the ship all things were taken out, so that the clothes which I took with me on my back I only had. All my instruments and books were taken all which was done unknown to the Emperor. So, in process of time, having knowledge of it, he commanded that they which had taken our goods should restore it to us back again. But it was here and there so taken that we could not get it again, saying fifty thousand in ready money was commanded to be given us, and in his presence brought, and delivered in the hands of one that was made our governor, 
who kept them in his hands to distribute them unto us as we had need for the buying of victuals for our men with other particular changes. In the end, the money was divided according to every man's place, so that the part of every one being divided, every one took his way where he thought best. This video has been made possible by World of Tanks. This is also a little clue for sources Voices of the Past will be looking at later in the year. World of Tanks is a free-to-play tank battle game with over 550 tanks and 40 arenas to drive them around in. Small tanks, big tanks, all guns blazing, or sneaking up behind, the choice is yours. Historical accuracy is also key here, so if you're a big fan of tanks, you definitely won't be disappointed by the realism and immersion on offer. So, if you sign up for an account now using this invite code, you'll get seven days premium access, as well as some other goodies. Thanks. This land of Japan is a great land, and lieth to the northwards in the latitude of 8 and 40 degrees, and the southernmost part of it in 5 and 30 degrees, and it lieth east by north and west by south, or west-southwest, 220 English leagues. The people of this land of Japan are good of nature, courteous, above measure, and valiant in war. Their justice is severely executed without any partiality upon transgressors of the law. They are governed in great civility. I mean, not a land better governed in the world by civil policy. The people be very superstitious in their religion and are of diverse opinions. There be many Jesuits and Franciscan friars in this land, and they have converted many to be Christians and have many churches in the land. So, in process of four or five years, the emperor called me, as diverse times he had done before. So one time, above the rest, he would have me to make him a small ship. I answered that I was no carpenter, and had no knowledge thereof. Well, do your endeavour, saith he. If it be not good, it is no matter. Wherefore, at his command, I built him a ship of the burden of eighty tons, or thereabout, which ship, being made in all respects as our manner is, he, coming aboard to see it, liked it very well, by which means I came in more favour with him, so that I came often in his presence, who from time to time he gave me presents, and at length a yearly stipend to live upon, much about seventy ducats by the year, with two pounds of rice a day, daily. Now being in such grace and favour, by reason I learned him some points of geometry, and understanding of the art of mathematics with other things. I pleased him so, that what I said he would not contrary. At which my former enemies did wonder, and at this time must entreat me to do them a friendship, which to both Spanish and Portuguese have I done, recompensing them good for evil. So to pass my time and get my living, it hath cost me great labour and trouble at first, but God hath blessed my labour. In the end of five years, I made supplication to the king to go out of this land, desiring to see my poor wife and children, according to my conscience and nature. Therefore, I do pray and entreat you in the name of Jesus Christ to do so much as to make my being here in Japan known to my poor wife and my two children fatherless, which thing is only my greatest grief of heart and conscience. Therefore, may this letter come to any of their hands, or the copy, that my friends and kindred shall have news that I do as yet live in this vale of my sorrowful pilgrimage, the which thing again and again I do desire for Jesus Christ his sake. You shall understand that the first ship that I did make, I did make a voyage or two in, and then the king commanded me to make another, the which I did, being of the burden of 120 tons. In this ship I have made a voyage from Miko to Edo, being as far from London to the Lizard or the land's end of England, which in the year of our Lord 1609 the king lent the governor of Manila to go with eighty of his men to sail to Acapulco. Now for my service, which I have done and daily do, being employed in the emperor's service, he hath given me a living, like unto a lordship in England with eighty or ninety husbandsmen, that be as my slaves or, or servants, 
which, although like precedent, was never here before given to any stranger. Thus God hath provided for me, after my great misery, and to him only be my honour and praise, power and glory, both now and forever, world without end. Now, whether I shall come out of this land, I know not. Until this present there hath been no means, but now, through the trade of the Hollanders, there is means. You shall understand that the Hollanders have here an indies of money, for in Japan there is much silver and gold to serve for the Hollanders to handle where they will in the East Indies. But the merchandise which is here vendable and ready money is raw silk, damask, black taffeties, black and red cloth of the best, lead and such like goods. So now, understanding by this Holland ship lately arrived here that there is a settled trade by my countrymen in the East Indies, I presume that amongst them some, either merchants, masters or mariners, must needs know me. Therefore, I have emboldened myself to write these few lines in brief, being desirous not to be over-tedious to the reader. Thus, in brief, I am constrained to write, hoping that by one means or another in the process of time I shall hear of my wife and children, and so with patience I wait the good will and pleasure of Almighty God, dated in Japan the 2 and 20th of October, 1611, by your unworthy friend and servant, to command in what I can. William Adams